Ma Live in Washington, D.C. It's been a tough week already, and uh, things continue to go downhill in some ways, and it's not over. It's only Tuesday. But I've been thinking back over the years of all the presidents we had since I first voted, and I actually voted for Nixon on his second term. That was what I got. It was 21, and I, my first time to vote. I was real excited about that. I learned that was a mistake later. But anyway, all during that time, even with Nixon, who did something really stupid and then tried to cover it up, which is what his downfall was. I never questioned any of the presidents, Republican or Democrat, whether they cared for their country or they loved their country. They weren't working with foreign powers. I've just never seen anything like it. And uh, it's just getting worse and it gets deeper every day. But it's just, uh, I just can't believe it. I, I sit at home, I wake up at night, I said, of all the presidents I've known in my lifetime, no one, is a treasonous presence like this one has. And then the Republicans have just covered it up. And the horrible things they're saying online today, the chief trade negotiator compared the intelligence committee to a Stalin committee on TV, on Fox News. I mean, it's just unbelievable. They just make things up so bad. Anyway, my one sign tonight is Rosie O'Donnell caught it pretty well. It's like Watergate, but with morons. That basically sums it up, doesn't it? Did you see my answer to her? No, I didn't see your answer. And I answered to her, moron gate. Moron gate, right. <laughs> but, you know, I hate to call people names, but it's just, what else can it be? Guy just went by here and gave us thumb down. You know, what can, what can you say? I mean, moron gate, that's you got to be a moron or something to do that. But seriously, my second sign is more important. Tomorrow is the anniversary of the horrible murder of Jamal Khashoggi, the global columnist for the Post, who was brutally murdered in a Saudi, what, a consul, at their consul? At their consulate in Turkey. Not only was he murdered, and they have a tape of it, an audio recording, and then they cut him up. Alive. Alive. And then the guy bragged how he can cut up body parts and so forth. And what has the U.S. done? Nothing. Help. Nothing. They have done nothing at all. Yes, it's just unbelievable. Hit their communications in a secret server. Right. We deployed troops to Saudi to help them. Right. right. So, you know, let's think about this. He was, a, he was a reporter, a columnist for the Washington Post, who was investigating the human rights abuses in Saudi Arabia, the war in Yemen, and the weapons deals between the U.S. and Saudi Arabia. He was doing his job. As a, as a reporter, and they murdered him. And. It was also critical of Right. And there was also been a. There was supposed to be a report to Congress from Trump administration due back in February about their. Um, what they found out in their investigation. They still. Congress has never seen a report <laughs> on the investigation of what's going on. Jamal's fiance actually contacted the White House and wanted to speak with Trump. He ignored her. She never heard any response from the White House. Remember, this is a guy working for an American newspaper, just doing his job. With an American citizen kid. Right. And at that time, the Crown Prince in Saudi Arabia and his, and his uh, sidekick who worked with him, who were the two leaders, nothing has ever happened to them. And they actually, the world looked down on those two until Trump and Pompeo and Kushner start bringing him back in. How many times have you seen a photo of them smiling with the guy? And this guy got away with murder. The guy who worked in the United States and nothing has happened at all. It's just unbelievable. And what's Trump's response? We are selling billions in defensive weapons to the Saudi and they pay in cash. That was the most important thing. 
getting cash for the defense industry in the United States. He didn't care a guy was murdered. He's no different. Trump is no different than Putin and the North Korean leader and the Philippine leader. They're all autocrats, fascist leaders. They don't care if anybody gets killed. It's all what's in their pocket, what's going to them. It's just a disgrace. But I want to leave you one thing. Tom Tolles, who's the political cartoonist in the Post, he had a, a great car cartoon. And what it, say, what it was, it's a blank piece of paper laying on a table with a fountain pen with a cap off laying on that blank piece of paper. And it said, this story is not finished. This story is not finished. And we cannot forget Jamal. It's been a year tomorrow since he was brutally murdered. Don't forget. He represents all the reporters and columnists in the world. And that's what this administration is trying to suppress. So support your reporters, support the open press, because we need it all the time. That's the only way we're going to take them down, just like we took Nixon down in the Watergate. It was the Washington Post that took him down. And we're going to take this guy down, too. Thanks. Uh, along those lines, there's a really good uh, frontline documentary about Mohammed bin Salman. It's like two hours long. It's very long, but it's very, very good. And one of the things I learned while watching the documentary is that, like, Russia, Saudi Arabia has a lot of social media bots. And they went into full bore action um, around the murder of Jamal Khashoggi. And so it dawned on me that we just don't have Russia to worry about in terms of hacking our election, but we have other countries as well. We have Saudi Arabia, we have North Korea has some of the highest tech hacking um, systems there are. So, you know, it doesn't have to be Russia this time. It can be some other traitorous di dictator who uh, Trump wants to hook up with and, and get something from. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to bring up another sad anniversary that we just passed. Um, this Sunday, I believe, was the one year anniversary of the first death in one of the detention centers of Darlene Cristobal Cordova Valle, who was 10 years old. And that was the one that was hid from the news for about two or three months. And we didn't hear about it until afterward. And we're coming up on the anniversary in December of the death of two other children in the detention centers, Jacqueline Cal Makin and Felipe Gomez Alonso. Um, I don't think justice has been found for those children. We don't know if any others have died in their custody, seeing as how the first death they hid for two months. Um, and there's still 50,000 people that are detained either at the border or in other detention centers or in private prisons or public prisons that contract with ICE. So another reason besides all the corruption is the human rights abuses that we can't continue to allow to happen to both foreign citizens, people seeking asylum, or our own U.S. citizens. Thank you, Adam. Yes, sir. 
myself out of 